Hey, this is C.B. Smallwood, and welcome to Mental Junk Food, where we talk about all things comics, sci-fi, horror, fantasy, pop culture, and everything in between. And today, uh, what I wanted to talk about is DC Comics. Is it going to drive off a cliff here real soon, as Deadpool creator Rob Liefeld says? I don't know. Let's find out. Well, actually, I do know, but <laughs> you'll find out what I think about it here in a second. Now, first of all, before we get started on this, I realize that this is old news, uh, as you can tell here by the article, it uh, this came out on June the 11th of 2019. And uh, as of this video, there's been about a week or two that's passed since this um, news broke. So really what I'm wanting to offer is my perspective on this um, instead of just kind of reciting, rehashing old news. And you, you'll get my point about it here in a second. Uh, but let's get a refresher course on what Rob Liefeld had to say. Uh Liefeld tweeted uh, some weeks ago, uh, DC Comics, going to drive off a cliff here real soon. Got to get my popcorn. I ain't never seen a company um, in such disarray as DC Comics. Thank God they have Batman to act as their, <laughs> act as their Tylenol, aspirin, laughing gas. More Batman, we'll fix it. Um, you know, and the comments go on and on and on. Um, understand my DC honesty will cost me a potential opportunity, but who cares? Come on. They should fire everybody in management and refresh. Uh, Batman will still be there for the next group. Well, anyway, I'm not going to get any more into all the different comments he's had to say about the demise of DC Comics. Uh, mainly what I want to offer is my perspective um, first of all, quickly, um, it does seem a little bit of a scorched earth policy toward DC. Like, you know, sort of like, you know, maybe, maybe he got offended a little bit about the way he was treated, either deservedly or undeservedly. I don't know. I wasn't there. I don't know how it went down. But regardless, you know, uh, it does seem that there's a little bit of bad vibes between uh, DC and Rob Liefeld. And uh, with his recent success with uh, Major X and the uh, Deadpool uh, movies, you know, there's been two of them now. And his uh, X-Force, or kind of like a B-Team X-Force, debuted in the last Deadpool. And uh, Cable, I mean, he's got a lot to uh, smile about here recently. I mean, you can tell in the picture, he's a very happy man. And if you notice, his mouth actually kind of uh, resembles the mouths that he draws in his comic. He does this kind of like uh, shape. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? But anyway, we're not here to talk about Rob Liefeld's mouth. We're talking about, we're here to talk about the things that come out of his mouth and how I disagree. And here's what I disagree about. I, DC Comics is not going anywhere anytime soon. And here's the reason why. Um, and... First of all, DC Comics is owned by Warner Brothers. It's owned by Bugs Bunny, okay? They've got gazillions of dollars to pour into DC Comics to keep it afloat if they want to, or they could just let it wither and die. Um, and the thing with DC Comics is, unlike some other publishers that are out there right now, they actually do have some smart people uh, employed at the top that are actually actively trying to sell comics. Um, which in this day and age is kind of like a, a foreign concept to a lot of publishers. And, and again, I'm not trying to throw shade. I'm just being honest here. And the thing with uh, DC Comics and what they're going through right now, the, the entire industry, it's not just DC Comics. Um, the thing that, that Rob Liefeld is not saying in all his tweets and quotes, is that Marvel Comics isn't doing so hot. And a lot of other major publishers are not doing so hot. Now, there's a myriad of reasons why that is, and that's been well covered by a lot of uh, independent um, uh, thought, a lot of independent press, and a lot of YouTubers, and what have you. So I'm not here to rehash everything that a lot of you already know. But my perspective is this. You know, Rob Liefeld is, is being heavily one-sided on this because the entire industry is driving off the cliff. And the entire industry is in trouble. Now, Marvel sales numbers are a little bit inflated because every time uh, they start to lose readers, 
they raise the price of their books. So uh, to their stockholders, it looks like you know their comics are doing well when in reality, um, they're not. They the, the sales for these books keep going down and down and down. You can go and look at Indicron's numbers, and I'm not going to pull that up. You know that's everybody else in the world has covered that. Um, but needless to say, you can look at the Indicron numbers from the 80s and the 90s, and you see a lot of books that were second or third tier books that were selling about 100,000 copies or more, 200,000, 300,000 copies of these uh, second stringer books, these B-team books that were doing so well uh, by today's standards. And now, now you're considered a success if if you can sell anywhere from 50,000 copies on up. I mean, things have gotten that bad. And there's a lot of reasons why for that. For example, taking out the spinner racks out of the mom and pop stores and in the gas stations, that's a diamond distributor's problem. Um, also, the, uh, the, the, the big publishing companies like Marvel and DC not working better with local comic shops, shops to make sure that they promote local comic shops and make people aware that these places exist and also making sure that they're not having policies such as uh, constant reboots and gimmicky covers and multiple variant covers that are actually saturating the market and leading to a lot of these uh, closures uh, for local comic shops because they got all these comics that they, they got they can do nothing with because nobody's buying them. Uh, they're producing substandard product, and they're u- and they're relying on gimmicks to sell it. Man, that was a mouthful. I told you I wasn't going to get into all of this, but I ended up doing it anyway. Um, but I guess the whole point of this video is, uh, you know, I like Rob Liefeld uh, as an artist and as a creator and all this other stuff. But as far as this opinion, you know, I disagree. I think this opinion is only looking at one side of the quarter. I think you need to flip that bad boy over and, and see the totality of, of the problem that's going on. You know, he's got his blinders on all that, all that Marvel money that he's been thrown his way for, uh, drawing these books, for, uh, creating these characters and the royalties that he's getting from the comics and uh, from the movies, uh, all that green, all that green is, is, is blinding him. I mean, look at the, look at the wrinkles he's getting, you know, right here. That's not from, that's not from age. That's from blinding green light. Of the money that Marvel's given him, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's bleached his teeth perfectly white. I mean, uh, yeah, I can understand his happiness. I, I have no problem with that. I just disagree with the assumption, um, the one-sided assumption that it's just DC Comics that's having trouble. And actually, uh, to finish this video up, you know, the thing with DC Comics, and this is something else that that some people, not, not all, but some people are missing, is that the policies that they're enacting right now, like getting rid of Vertigo, reducing the number of books that they publish as a publisher and all this other stuff, that's actually a good thing. If you're not making money, you have to tighten your belt and restructure to make sure that the company as a whole survives. You can't keep printing in mass and start printing more books uh, because you're going to flood the market, you're going to kill the market. <laughs> you know, does that does that make sense? You know, uh, when I see DC actually cutting back on titles and restructuring things, I see that as a good thing. I see it as a company that's actually trying to remain profitable. I see that as a company that is actually trying to survive. You know, the fact that DC Comics uh, reached out to Walmart to uh, start selling their uh, big, thick, uh, what, what do you call those books? Those big old thick uh, trade paperback looking things, you know, the 64 page, 84, 100 page extravaganzas. I can't think of it all right off the top of my mind, uh, head right now, but you get the idea. You know, they, they were doing that, you know, to kind of fill out if it's another market that they expand into. And at least they're trying, you know. I mean, there's a lot more stuff that they need to be doing to make themselves more profitable and expand their reach and remind people that they still make comics and that the and that watching the movies is not the only way that you can experience DC Comics. Um, so there's still a lot more work to do in that area. But uh, Rob Liefeld, uh, I'm a fan of your work. I don't care what people have to say about uh, 
your lack of feet in all the pouches you draw. Uh, it's cool. <laughs> Uh, but as far as this opinion, I, I disagree. It's the whole industry that's having trouble. And last but not least, you know, the way that we're going to solve this problem, the way that we're going to fix things in the comic book industry is a really in, uh, simple solution. The Indie Comics Revolution. Now, what is the Indie Comics Revolution? Well, the Indie Comics Revolution is basically, it's just an organic movement that's been going on for for quite a while indie comics has been around since comic books have been around uh indie comics is basically just you know regular everyday joe blows and joe janes <laughs> out there making the comics that they want to see making the comics that, that they're passionate about you know stuff that's not published by the big two you know marvel and dc and they're just going in alone they're they're doing their own thing and that's indie comics, you know. And to me, the indie comics revolution is is about just three or four simple things. It's it's about promoting indie comics and, and supporting indie comics. It's about saving the comic book industry. It's about being professional, bringing back profesh, professionalism back into comics. You know, a time back when uh, comic book creators were a little bit more reserved with, you know, their personal views because they were interested in courting the dollar uh, of their customers or their potential customers. That's not to say that they had to entirely censor what they think, you know, but uh, be more respectful in the way that they express themselves. Be classy, you know, be classy, you know, be professional. So Indie Comics Revolution is about, you know, supporting Indie Comics, buying Indie Comics, making Indie Comics, being professional, and following the golden rule. And, and what is the golden rule? Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. So basically, treat people the way that you want to be treated. And that, to me, in a nutshell, is what the Indie Comics Revolution, that's, that's part of what this is about. Making the comics that you want to see, uh, it doesn't matter what your politics are, what, or what your lack of politics are, what your religion is, or your lack thereof, uh, what your sex is, or what your skin pigmentation is. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're a human or an alien from out from the far reaches of the cosmos. The fact is, Indie Comics Revolution, Indie Comics is for everybody. And if you're tired of seeing how things are going in the comic book industry, if you're tired of not seeing more of what you want out of Marvel and DC, or if you're tired of not seeing anything that you want out of Marvel and DC, then why, why continue to buy product that is not fulfilling in the hopes that it's going to change? I'm one of these people that kind of gave up on that. Uh, it's sad. You know, I love I love Marvel. You know, Spider-Man, the Hulk, and the X-Men, the Avengers, Fantastic Four, and yada, yada, yada. I love all those characters. Um, but I've kind of accept that many of the things that I enjoyed about them and, and you know, the, the continuity, the shared universe... Um, in the, in the rich history that, that was Marvel Comics and, and, and how things would build up for a long run. Um, you know, all that stuff is over with. That's gone. And that's not likely to come back anytime soon because the people that run it have a different business philosophy, you know. And um, I'm not going to get into all of that, but basically I'm, I'm an indie comics guy. I believe in indie comics. I believe in supporting other people that make the comics and buying comics from those people. Uh, and I believe in making my own indie comics. And I recommend that you be part of this revolution too. It's time to join the revolt. As always, this is CB Smallwood. You're watching Mental Junk Food. And I will see you in the next video.